Hey everybody, welcome back to the Murder Journal. I'm Mel, he's Tommy, and we are going to give you a real brief video about some trials that have just started or upcoming that you are definitely going to want to pay attention to. So I know we recorded yesterday, Tommy, and but, you know, we do trial coverages and there's some really good ones. And let me rephrase that. Some ones that have really interesting oh, arguments. Good, good word. Good word there. Um, I like and I think that it it will open your eyes to some of these arguments because, you know, we don't know until we see evidence in here statements and stuff but we got some good ones going on and i understand from you there's been an update with karen reed yeah so uh yesterday they had three of the uh state troopers go underneath the investigation through ia um internal affairs for people who don't understand what ia is and uh one was found unfounded today that's the so, lieutenant who's yes. in charge, right? Okay. But the other two, which is the, still Proctor, Proctor's bosses. So Brian Tully. Yes. And Yuri Buchanan. Yep. The and, one uh, who was just like, mm, I don't recall. I don't. I don't recall. I don't recall. That one? Got yes. it. So. Are, so they're under IA. Are they working right now, or do you? Yeah, know? they're they're actually working full pay. Uh, still with uh, Kevin Albert, he's still on paid leave. And then you got Proctor's no he's paid leave, but it's but there's like us like we've said before. There's a bunch of people who seem to be getting caught up with this whole thing, mm -hmm. and just seeing how it all fits out. Now the Karen Reed case. Uh, is going to happen next June at 2025. Whoa. Uh, yeah, so they got so a far going. out? Takes a year for the prosecution to get their fucking, their shit right, I guess. But they've got their stuff to get. I mean, they had their No, case. they didn't. They got Whoa. blown out of the water. I know. But, I mean, they should have their... They said they're ready to go. They've got all their evidence, allegedly. I don't I know. Don't. So first up, we have the Black Swan trial, which is going now. It started yesterday. They did opening statements, and uh, they heard the 911 call, and they heard the testimony of the father's daughter. And in this case, Ashley Benfield, on the right, she's being charged with second-degree murder for the death of her husband, Douglas Benfield. He was 58 at the time. And she shot him to death in her bedroom back in September of 2020. Now, she's not saying she didn't pull the trigger. She's not saying she didn't shoot him and kill him. She's claiming she did so in self-defense. They got married in 2016 after knowing each other for only 13 days. She then got pregnant and moved to Florida and automatically started fighting for sole custody of their child. She accused Douglas of abuse. After multiple, multiple hearings and investigations, CPS investigations, the judge found that Ashley's claims did not have, quote, a scintilla of credibility. And so they awarded him visitation. Now, she claims that they were going to reconcile. So he went over to her house to help her move her belongings up to Maryland where they were going to live together. But during this move, she said he allegedly assaulted her. She was fearing for her life. So she shot him and the prosecution saying, no, nah, she actually had no intention of reconciling with him or moving to Maryland. She lured him over after she exhausted all her legal avenues in Florida to keep him from seeing their daughter. Now, during her uh, previous investigations, when she was claiming abuse to try and keep sole custody, she never once mentioned physical abuse or domestic violence with her. So um, when it came time, once that was dismissed, she then said that she it, used the stand your ground law. 
-hmm. that, you know, and which I think in Florida is you don't have to retreat at all. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that was in July of last year, but the judge wrote that the evidence proved clearly and convincingly she is not entitled to use the stand your ground law as um, court ordered immunity because she was not justified in using deadly force against the victim on September 27th, 2020. So then she filed her new defense documents stating that she suffers from battered spouse syndrome. Um, Tommy, you mentioned about the medical examiner, which the medical examiner, uh, doesn't believe Doug was even facing her, um, when the shots were fired. So that means he took these four rounds in the back. You see, and that's. And, and literally mm-hmm. we, we, me and you have talked about this, but literally two ways could have happened. Mm-hmm. He went off the handle at her. She was scared. He was walking away like he was going to do something again. So she shot him Mm -hmm. or she shot him just because. Because she wants sole custody of her daughter and thought she could use this. So this one's very, very interesting. And uh, and it's ongoing right now. And we're going to cover snippets of this because this one's kind of hairy. You know, battered spouse syndrome is a real thing. Yes. But it's also a real thing. And as a woman who was a single mother, I understand the frustrations. And I, Tommy knows I was um, in an, uh, unfortunately, an abusive marriage for, for a while. However, I also know that there are women who file false claims and will do anything to try and have sole custody. When you've got kids involved, you know, sometimes people just freaking lose their minds and it's this one's going to be interesting it this is one dummy where definitely it depends on the evidence i think yeah no i agree with you i was just thinking about this whole thing like i i know they're on day two right now they had the psychologists up there Mm -hmm. talking about everything going on about her mental health and everything so we're, Does I, he have mental health issues? Or, I don't know. I've got uh, to go back and watch the video. Like I said, he was just on. So okay. I definitely am going to look into this one. Okay. Um, the next one is Massachusetts v. Christine Ricci, not to be confused with the actress Christina Ricci, which was my mistake in the beginning. My bad. So... She, this is the one that I think is, is pretty sad. So this one, there was mental health issues on both sides. He was a military veteran and he's been a boss. He was a Boston firefighter for 23 years. Um, And they had three children together, but she's being charged with murder, assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. And he was murdered um, January 20, 2021. Now, Apparently, he was stabbed in the heart and the back of his left shoulder. Again, yeah, so he was stabbed twice in the chest and then one uh, in his left shoulder. I know that's not my left. This is my left, but it's just reversed on here. Anyways, uh, right right behind his left shoulder. And with this one, she was... 46 at the time. So what she's claiming is for the defense, she's stating that um, her husband was having a a manic episode for three days. He came in from shoveling snow. They got into an argument. He became aggressive, grabbed her by the throat, threw her on the floor. And so she, you know, she had to, she's saying she had to fight back in self-defense. Um, but what's weird was he was also found with a huge slash across his back. So teaching hand to hand combat for the army and part of our courses we do is, is knife training. And I, when you stab somebody in the chest, they, they'll either fall backwards or they'll fall onto you. And then from there you could turn around and. Yeah, she wasn't military trained. 
No, no, no. But I'm saying uh, it's just slashing, stabbing, and slashing. And you yeah. just naturally, everybody uh, does it. Like, right. So I think the gash okay. on his back shoulder was as he fell. Yeah, it had to come saying, on him. But I'm interesting about this. This one, yeah. this one to me, there's gonna I, the evidence alone is stacked. Is what? So it, is it? I didn't. So they have a lot of evidence in this case. As far as I'm tracking, yes. Okay. The the thing that's going to hurt her is there's no records ever of that abuse. exist to support the claims of any manic behavior or abuse on his part. However, um, he did have an affair and many years ago, or I don't know how long ago. And the, so the prosecutors are saying that that's what drove her to kill him. And... You know, yeah, but then why, if it's been years, why are you still with him? Well, I don't know how long it's been, but keep in mind, they have three kids and together and she probably, I mean, love, you know, you're angry, you're hurt. I wouldn't slash somebody, stab them to death, but I don't know. So a uh, jury selection started this week, right? With this case. Yeah, it's in right now. It's okay. going on right now as we're talking. So since they're doing jury selection, I would assume that the trial will start immediately after. Yeah. Unless something comes up. The next case is one that I have been following for many years. And this is the Delphi murder case. Um, With... Uh, and these are the two girls that were murdered. And, uh, you know, it's Abby Williams and Libby German. And they were like, what, 13 when this yeah. happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were young. They, and they were, these are the ones that were, um, and I believe this happened where? In Indiana? Delphi, Indiana. Yep. So they were just teenagers. They were 14 and 13. They went for a walk on the Delphi Historic Trail back in February of 2017. Um, and then they disappeared. So then there was this community-wide search for them. And they found their bodies the next day near this bridge just outside of Delphi. And um, one of them had her cell phone going and she was able to record like a blurry picture of the a man that approached them as well as it captured a voice that said what down the hill i think that's what it said down the I, hill i watched the video and mm -hmm. you can clearly i would i'm not going to say clearly it's not 1080p but no. you can see the guy like it uh, sucks. And I, I you actually know, got a picture. This yeah. is from the cell phone. Like we said, it's not clear. Right. But it matches the image of the guy who they had arrested. Matter of fact, he was wearing the same clothes. Yes. He was wearing the same clothes when they came and knocked on his door. I just remember that. And I laughed. So now this is the suspect. His name is Richard Allen. On the left is what he looked like the day of his arrest. On the right, is what he's looking like now and he is not doing well in jail not sh he's being held at the white county jail um not doing well at all um and there is unsealed court records that detail how there was cell phone video and an unspent bullet that led officers to arrest yeah it was found right beside the the girls yeah. So this is also a very dirty case. And what I mean by that was there was an evidence leak. Yeah. Again, on the defense, you were saying earlier. The yeah. Def no, the defense. One of, the, I know. I'm sorry. Um, you said one of the employees who's no longer working with them. Yes. Uh, sent something over to their friends and their friends ended up put it online or something like that. So it was the, there was a defense 
uh, employee. His name is Mitch Westerman. He and and he worked for uh, one of the lawyers, Baldwin, and he admitted that he went by the firm one day. He saw some evidence photos related to the case, and it was spread out in the conference room. Yeah. So he used his phone to take some pictures of the evidence, and then he shared those phones with some sort with another person from Fishers, Indiana. And then that man shared the evidence with a man from Texas who then sent it to YouTube and podcast creators. So he, it, it almost caused a, a dismissal mistrial. The defense team tried to, they threatened to withdraw. I mean, this was just already, it's just a, hot mass express inside of a dumpster fire inside of a train wreck that a plane crash on it's, it it's, sounds like it too like it just sounds there's a yeah. lot of stuff and for those and that are wondering with the league didn't the defense yeah. try to like get it all canceled what do you mean like didn't they file to have like, yeah they something... tried to have it dismissed this case dismissed um unfortunately um, the judge found that the leak isn't going to hurt their, you know, the their case, case at this point. Um, and Westerman was charged, um, with conversion and that's just a misdemeanor. So, mm. but it also talks about what we do, you know, with social media and trial watchers and things like that. You know, I think and if you do true crime, uh, please let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree and why. But if someone were to send me evidence photos and I know the trial has not started, and maybe this is because I was paralegal, I feel there's an obligation to not publish and post those ahead of a trial and notify uh, the court that yeah. this has happened because you know this is essentially someone's life on the line i totally agree with your statement like it is it's you're you're messing around with stuff but i also uh you know there's been people who've who've sold pictures to the news to make money and then they get caught yeah. up in the legal system for sharing uh, yeah that's a no-no i think it's one thing to cover true crime it's one thing to uh, like what we do cover trials or but there has to be a modicum of decency and you especially if you cover trials or you watch them, then, you know, there's a responsibility to protect the sanctity of our judicial process. And oh, yeah. I don't think that podcasters or YouTubers or any social media influencers, um, I don't think it is our place to get involved in the case unless you are directly in the case. You know, if you're not involved, just, just cover it. You know, and, and here's the other side of this. If somebody does send you something... And you know that it's it's just keep it to yourself, you know. Notif keep it to yourself, and then it, and then when it comes out in trial, you've got a copy of it. Cool. Now you can show it, mm -hmm. you know. But honestly, you're asking for a world of hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that no bueno. So the next one, this one. Now this one is monumental, and this one I am definitely going to be watched. This isn't going to happen until later this year in September, but this is the trial of Carly Gregg. Now, Carly Gregg is on the left. She's only 15 years old, but she was 14 at the time. She allegedly shot her mother twice in the face and once below the chin on March 19th of last year, and then invited a friend over to look at the body. Her mom was a high school math teacher. Her mom's husband, um, Carly's stepfather, got home and he found his wife on the floor. Carly, he said, was in the kitchen. 
she aimed the gun at him and then shot him in the shoulder. Now, the reason why this is interesting, she's 15 now and she's not being held as a minor. I was going to ask, are they charging her as an adult? Yeah. And yes, um, they, the attorneys are, her, the defense attorneys argued that minors are expected to testify and therefore media and the public should be um, barred from the courtroom. And so the judge then, his name is Judge Dewey Arthur, he denied that request. Specifically, he stated, this is the public's courtroom. The people of Rankin County own this courtroom, not the judge, nobody else. So this court is not going to exclude the public. And then her attorneys argued that, listen, a family's tragedy is not fodder for public entertainment. And I agree. It is, it, it's not supposed to be entertainment. But the judge stated, it's not entertainment. It's the interest in cases is simply a fact of humanity. And as far back as the days of Oedipus, uh, later Shakespeare, people have been interested in jury trials. And in this country, we have free media. We have the free press. So you and there's a need for things not to happen behind closed doors for transparency. So he's going to ensure an open public and fair trial. Now, she's also being held at an adult facility on a one million dollar bond. Yeah, he the judge is. um waiting on a doctor's mental health evaluation of Greg, which is supposed, or Carly Greg, which is due next week. Um, and the judge ruled that her defense cannot provide her with closing clothing that is not jailed, 